Hey guys, so initially I did post the black picture on my Instagram feed today in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. I realized that there's a better way I can make an impact on the Blackout Tuesday by educating you all and sharing the knowledge that I've accumulated by having the privilege of ethnic studies in college. So I go to Cal State Northridge and my professor was Tracy Buenavista. That class was titled Race, Racism, and Critical Thinking. So according to author Damali Ayo, the five steps of fixing racism are to first admit it because it's real. Second, to listen. Third, to educate. Fourth, to broaden your experience. And fifth, to take action. And so educating yourself can take on various forms such as reading articles, reading books, watching videos, and here's a video, surprise, surprise. Let's start off with race. Race, first and foremost, is a social construct. It's something that has not existed forever. It was created a few centuries ago and it was used to justify slavery. Race is a social construct that categorizes people based on a hierarchical worldview that associates ancestry, dominance, and phenotype with moral attributes. And race basically is used to assume what a person is like. So based on what someone sees on the outside, people think that they can see what's on the inside. What you should know is that Race doesn't tell you anything about a person other than, yeah, they look like that or they're associated with these other people. But it's such a surface level thing and that's why it's been the root of many problems. Racism is any action that subordinates a group or individual on different levels, such as personal, institutional, and structural. So racism and race, the function of that has been used in history to justify exploitation, slavery, colonialism, and genocide. So right now I'm going to be discussing the different types of racism, and there are quite a few. So to start off, we have individual racism. Individual racism is an individual's racist assumptions, beliefs, or behaviors. This can occur at both the unconscious and conscious level, and can be both active and passive. So, individual racism, this can occur every day before social distancing. When you were telling racist jokes with your friends, this can also be seen when someone clutches their purse as they walk past a black person on the street. Anything that has to do with racism on the individual level. Next, we have systematic and structural racism. Systematic and structural racism is a social, political, and economic system that routinely advantages white people and disadvantages people of color to the point that such racial inequities are deemed normal and legitimized. So what we're seeing now with systematic racism is that people are racially profiled by cops. Next up we have institutional racism, which is the policies, laws, customs and practices from institutions that create advantages for white people and oppression for people of color. And of course this might not even mention race in the policies explicitly. Basically race doesn't have to be explicitly mentioned in legislation for it to apply to a certain group of people. Institutional racism can be seen in history with the very first thing which was slavery, Chattel slavery. The way that black people were counted was as three-fifths of a person, subhuman. It's based on racism that a human owning another human being was justified. For internalized racism, this is a situation that occurs in a racist system where a racial group oppressed by racism supports the supremacy and dominance of another group by following the same attitudes, behaviors, social structures, and ideologies used by the dominating group. So internalized racism, that's pretty straightforward and it's probably something that you can see because once something is repeated enough, you start to believe it. Any lies that you hear over and over again, 
and that might cause racism internally and that would cause you to agree with the dominating group. Last for today we have interpersonal racism and interpersonal racism are acts of racial discrimination committed on a personal level usually between individuals. So this can be seen in public, in school, in a workspace and a lot of these can be racial microaggressions, maybe like s small comments that are made every day and those can really irritate people that are being oppressed. So now that I've given you the definitions for these different types of racism, I hope that you're able to identify them in everyday life and be able to point it out and call it out. And it shouldn't stop here, you should keep researching the different types of racism because I'm learning more every day and this class definitely has been helpful for me. It's just something that we can't ignore, especially during this time. I just wanted to bring up to anyone in Fremont, we are protesting on June 6th at 2 p.m. We're starting at the Superior Court, going to City Hall, and then finally the Police Department. And this protest is meant to be peaceful, and you're supposed to maintain social distancing, which is six feet apart. That's all for today. I hope you learned something, and if you need any more resources, don't hesitate to DM me. Thank you.